Hi there, my name is Peter Versteeg and today I'm going to show you how to retrofit a plant with a new technology in the IECM and to find the resulting performance and cost implications. The examples in this video will be for a conventional coal-fired power plant, though you can also retrofit with other plant types as well. I'm assuming you're already familiar with the basic operation of the IECM. If not, please see the introductory video before watching this one. We will start by selecting a pulverized coal power plant in the IECM. You can open a new power plant by selecting File, New Session. My power plant type will be a pulverized coal power plant, the default, and I will call it PC Retrofit for short. And I'll click OK. The base power plant does not have any emissions control equipment. So let's first configure the current plant design. I'm going to add two devices, in-furnace NOx controls, representing low NOx burners, and a particulate collector, a cold side ESP. This represents my current plant design. Now let's say that I want to retrofit a system for SO2 control onto this power plant. Specifically, I want to retrofit a wet limestone flue gas desulfurization system that captures 98% of the SO2 and see what the performance and cost implications would be. After that, I'm going to also look into retrofitting an additional system for SO2 capture. Just to save a little time, I'm going to assume that most of the default specifications in the IECM match my existing power plant. So I'm going to accept all the default values on the overall plant tab and assume that my plant has a levelized capacity factor of 75%, that it has these financing characteristics, and these costs of purchased chemicals and materials. On the fuels tab, I'll also accept this default coal and its delivered cost. I'll also use the default O&M costs for all major pieces of equipment on these later tabs. But there are a few parameters I do want to change. First, on the base plant, the IECM default is a new 650 megawatt supercritical unit. Most existing plants in the US are subcritical units. So for my plant, I'm going to change the boiler type to a subcritical plant. And I'll keep the new steam heat rate. I'm also going to adjust the gross capacity of my plant to its actual size of 500 megawatts gross. Now I have a plant that looks like many existing coal plants in the US. The overall performance of this plant as it is currently configured is shown here under get results. The net electrical output is 481 megawatts and the overall efficiency is 37.8 percent. For the same coal flow rate the net electrical output and overall plant efficiency will drop when the SO2 system is added onto this plant because the wet flue gas desulfurization system uses some electricity. We'll see this in a little while after we do the retrofit. First, we need to adjust some of the economic parameters to correctly represent plant costs. The IECM, by default, calculates costs associated with building a new plant. Since in a retrofit scenario the plant is already built, the capital costs have to be adjusted because some or all of the existing equipment has already been amortized. In this video, I'm going to assume that all of the existing plant equipment has been completely amortized. 
This means that all of those costs have been recovered, so they shouldn't be included in our overall costs. This would typically correspond to an older power plant. To amortize equipment for each existing major plant system, you would go to set parameters, then capital costs for that system. So first, we'll start with the base plant. At the bottom of the screen is a parameter called percent TCR amortized. This is the percentage of the total capital cost that has already been amortized. The default value of 0% indicates that none of the cost of that component has yet been amortized, which would be the case for a new plant. For our existing plant that is fully amortized, we therefore would change the default value to 100%. This effectively removes the capital cost of this component from the overall plant economics. In a similar fashion, I'm going to uh, zero out the capital costs of the existing particulate collector. And all the other systems. When I do this for all the plant systems, the capital cost goes from its new plant calculated value to zero. For newer plants where the equipment has not been fully amortized, you would adjust the percent TCR amortized between 0 and 100% based on the particular situation you're modeling. If I now look at cost results for the overall plant, the annual revenue requirement is now based on the operating and maintenance costs of the plant only. This indicates how much money is required to produce electricity from a plant already in existence. This in turn affects the dispatch order of the power plant in a larger power grid. This is called the marginal dispatch cost of an existing plant and is the cost required to turn the plant on. It is important at this point to save this power plant or to make note of the important parameters that you are interested in. Typically, this would include the coal flow rate, the power produced, the plant efficiency, the costs, and so on. This is important because the addition of an FGD system will change many of these parameters. So now we have done everything for the existing plant, and we can add the wet FGD system. Now we will add a wet flue gas to sulfurization system onto this plant, and we will configure the IECM to represent this as a retrofit. On the Configure Plant screen, select wet FGD system, the diagram of the plant changes, and now I have the option of mixing the FGD waste with the fly ash, or keeping it separate for disposal and reuse. I'll keep the default as a separate solid stream. When we go to the set parameters screen, there is now a tab for SO2 capture. Here, under performance, the default SO2 removal efficiency is close to 81%, which is what's needed to meet the federal new source performance standards for this particular coal. Here, we are going to change this under the performance tab to 98% to represent the actual design requirement for this wet FGD system. In addition, there are a lot of other design parameters, which I'm not going to talk about here, but which are described in the IECM documentation. There is also a retrofit tab at the bottom of the screen. This tab is available for all of the major systems in the power plant. If you click on the retrofit tab, you will see all the major process areas for the SO2 capture system. This is where we adjust the process area costs to account for the difficulties often associated with retrofitting. These numbers scale the new plant costs to represent site-specific difficulties such as higher costs of construction due to limited space. These cost adders might be something like 10 to 50 percent or more depending on the situation. 
In this example, I'm going to assume that retrofitting an SO2 unit onto this power plant would require an additional 20% cost adder above the costs of a new wet FGD system. And so, I will change the value of all of these components to 1.2. Now we will take a look at the performance and cost implications of retrofitting. The gross plant output will not have changed, but the net output has dropped from 481 megawatts to about 469 megawatts, and the overall plant efficiency dropped about one percentage point to 36.8%. This is because the SO2 system uses a considerable amount of energy that is drawn from the power plant. Likewise, if we look at the cost summary, the only capital cost listed is for the SO2 system because the costs of the other existing equipment have been amortized. The new revenue required takes into account the capital costs of the SO2 system and so the revenue requirement has now increased from nearly $22 per megawatt hour to almost $33 per megawatt hour. A final reminder when you're analyzing retrofit costs is to check the financial assumptions you made. Recall that we accepted the IECM default which assumed a 30-year book life for cost recovery. Some retrofits might have a shorter life which would increase the overall revenue requirement. There's a separate video that looks in more detail at these financial assumptions. The procedure we have just gone through can be used when retrofitting any piece of equipment. But it's a bit more complex if the equipment being added draws a large amount of steam from the steam cycle as well as electricity. To demonstrate this, we are going to look at retrofitting a CO2 capture and storage system, or CCS, that requires both electricity and steam. In this case, I'm going to add an amine system onto the plant for CO2 capture. We will still need the SO2 capture system to avoid poisoning the amine system in this case. Now for a retrofit analysis, the physical plant size is fixed and therefore the fuel flow rate does not change. But since the CO2 capture system draws steam from the steam cycle, the gross power from the plant will drop because not as much steam will go through the turbines. So we will have to make some adjustments to the gross power plant in the IECM to keep the fuel flow rate constant. That's because the IECM is set up to specify the gross power output of a new plant and then calculate the required coal flow rate, whereas for a retrofit situation, it's the coal flow rate that has to be specified. If we look at the base plant parameters, we see that the gross uh, power is still set to 500 megawatts as before but in this case the steam cycle heat rate is now much higher after we added the CO2 capture system. So the ISM has already used this value to calculate a higher fuel flow rate uh, needed to meet the gross power requirement. To model the retrofit plant I have to reduce the gross power so that the coal flow rate decreases back to its original value of 163.9 tons per hour. To do this, I can take the ratio of the heat rates of the steam cycle before and after the addition of the CO2 capture system. That's 7790 BTU per kilowatt hour divided by 9628 BTU per kilowatt hour to get 0.81. Then I multiply 0 0.81 by 500 megawatts to get the new power plant gross size, 404.6 megawatts gross. And I set the base plant to this size. If I look at the fuel flow rate, it is now 163.9 tons per hour as expected. I could also get the correct number through trial and error if necessary. For the rest of the CO2 capture system parameters, I'm simply going to use the IECM defaults for this example. 
Looking first at the overall plant performance results, we see that the addition of the CCS system results in a very large drop in the net power output of the plant, which is now 334.9 megawatts. The overall plant efficiency has fallen substantially as well to 26.3%. The costs have also increased. Here I have added the same 20% capital cost retrofit factor onto the amine system as I did with the wet FGD system. The capital required is now close to 535 million and the revenue requirement is now close to $77 per megawatt hour, assuming no change in the plant capacity factor. The revenue required increase from $22 per megawatt hour to $77 per megawatt hour represents an increase of about five cents per kilowatt hour. I might conclude that this cost increase is unacceptable, so instead of simply retrofitting an amine system onto the existing subcritical plant, I might want to consider repowering the plant. This involves replacing the subcritical unit with a more efficient supercritical boiler and steam cycle. This involves going back to the base plant unit type where you can choose either a subcritical or a supercritical unit. In this case, I will select the ultra supercritical unit. Then, before I forget, under the capital cost tab, I'll reset the percent TCR amortized to zero, since this is a new boiler. Then I'll go back to the performance tab and readjust the gross power to keep the coal flow rate that we had before so we don't have to make any big changes to the rest of the plant. I again use the ratio of heat rates before and after the boiler change and in this case the new gross power is 490.4 megawatts gross. Now let's take a look at the overall plant results. Under performance, the net power produced by the repowered plant has climbed to 421 megawatts and the net plant efficiency is now up to 33%. The capital requirement has also climbed to about $1.3 billion. The levelized revenue requirement is now about $95 per megawatt hour. So in this case, while more power becomes available with the repowered option, this configuration also comes with higher costs compared to simply retrofitting the SO2 and CO2 capture systems on the subcritical plant using the prior assumptions. In closing, we should stress that any analysis of a major retrofit requires a careful look at all the performance and cost parameters in the IECM to make sure they indeed represent the power plant in question. For example, in the case of a retrofit CO2 capture system, options for heat integration with the steam cycle may not be as efficient as with a new power plant. In that case, we would need to increase the heat to electricity conversion efficiency parameter to account for the site-specific situation. That might require separate engineering studies outside of the IECM. In the absence of such information, the IECM can still provide quick answers to bound the problem for a variety of assumptions. This concludes the video on retrofitting. If you would like more information on the IECM, please visit our other videos as well as our user documentation.